Welcome to Oxbone, your technical magazine with Wolfgang Rudolf. Hello and a very warm welcome. What slow motion is, you know that. I don't mean how some people work like me, no. Slow motion means that we show something chronologically. We expend time to see what happens in a certain time lapse. What we can't see with our own eyes, Alfred Muskiers patented that in 1904 a serial mirror, no not patented, that was 1906, but developed this then. In those days it was pretty hard, you only had pictures, no videos or such, it was also complicated then, and a couple of years later they stopped doing it. He couldn't follow his idea because of financial reasons. And then the firm Engelmann in Dresden had developed it further. He had let his gadget be made there. And then they forgot about it. And then in 1916 they brought devices like that onto the market. Even this was not a success, maybe. The people didn't have the usage for such things. But let's just think about it. Slow motion, that is that when you look at the TV and watch car racing. And you want to see how the tyres are changing in the curves and you use a tele lens onto the tyres and you can see them larger. And you can, because it is delayed like this with a slow motion, see how the tyres change. You can do a lot of studies like in sport, how you move, how you can move better, how you run, hurdle runners and all these things. And even in a technique we have such problems to see things which have running times and that our eyes don't catch it. Why? We need at least 18 pictures that we have a homogeneous expiration. And then it still flickers, especially in the periphery. That is why we have, by the television, 25 pictures, by half definition. But there were two pictures joined together. Each had the even and uneven lines, and I made 50 pictures out of it. And that is over the flicker board, which is at about 47 to 48 hertz. That is first the one side. We have to have the technique, which seemingly slows down the time. I know we can do that. Well, we turn on this fan here. It makes a bit of a noise. That is why I've took off my things. And when we look at it with the camera, then you can see that you can't see anything. The disc that is like a grey disc, the wings move that fast, our eyes can't resolve them. But when I want to see in running, if the wings deform or so, then I need the technique to help me. I'll turn it off again. It is trying to moderate with me. And I don't like that. So now it is off. And then you can see an effect that you will see shortly again. You know that from Wild West films. The wheels of the stagecoach suddenly turn backwards. Or when a car rolls out and it has wonderful alloys, all of a sudden they turn backwards and forwards and so. It doesn't really happen. We all know that because how does this effect come? Let's take a spoke from a coach or post coach from the wheel the spoke moves so around, but let's imagine the spoke stands like this when the picture is taken from a camera, vertical. And then the next picture is took when it stands there. Up to now everything is okay, but when the next spoke comes and it stands nearly at the top, then our eyes think the spoke hasn't made the long way to there but the short way backwards. And that is why it looks like that. And when the rotation speed changes, then this jump changes too. Sometimes forwards, sometimes backwards. Now this, f now this fan we recorded with a high speed camera. And this high speed camera makes much more pictures. Pro second to that what a normal camera does. And we look at the screen now. I can start the recording of the high speed camera. And as you can see, we have there an effect, where it turns forwards and backwards, and that's because the fan doesn't turn evenly, and also in its number of revolutions varies. 
The recording speed of the high spill camera runs constantly, and that's why we see it sometimes run forwards or backwards, or even still standing. But we can also stop the recording and split the pictures into single pictures, and see picture for picture how the wings deform. So in the technic area there are lots of utiches where we have to stretch the time and the technic for this there are cameras which have more than these 50 pictures or 50 full pictures or 60 in a different form per second make it can be thousands of pictures and then you can see in a very small steps by resolved and seen but there are also problems and I would like to show you and talk about where the problems are. When so many pictures are made in a short time, and for this let us have a look at one of these high speed cameras. <laughs> So now to my build up here. I have a high speed camera from PCE, the HSC1660. And next to it is the delivered with LED spotlight, with six lighting diodes to light up the object. We will come to that shortly why we need that. And also a remote control to trigger the camera sequences. I can attach to the back of the camera. I can also operate it completely from the computer. Attaches the camera with a delivered USB cable onto a USB 3.0 interface. The computer should have at least Windows 7, better is Windows 8, with 2 GB memory. And that is also important with 2 GB clock speed because it is a lot of data which is sent over and also in a computer processed. So also delivered is the program and installation is simple. <coughs> the camera itself is automatically recognized from Windows. On a CD is the program, which you can see here, delivered with it. And installation is trivial. That is first to the spe experimental setup. For when I want to record something, and for this I have brought a toy, normally in this egg times sand. But here with me, there are metal shavings in it because in the bottom there's no magnet and I build up much nicer. So let's have a look with the normal camera. I will turn it around and you can look what happens. That looks pretty nice and spectacular. And when it is finished, you could naturally show it again in slow motion. What does that mean? Well, I'll let one picture stand longer because we do not have an electricity. Like by music, you can't stop that because it has to be sent continuously. Pictures I have always chopped in front of me. Single pictures. And when they are quick enough, after another sent in front of my eye, then they would flow smoothly too. But when I let these pictures run slower, then it starts to jerk. It goes slowly, naturally we have methods today to replace pictures in there. We also have programs to interpol between pictures. But that is all lied about. But there I count a picture and don't record the reality. The only way to recognize what happens between the pictures, what our eyes don't see, then you need a high speed camera. <coughs> As you have seen, looks good, but to really see what happens, there you can't. You have to do that using the camera. I'll show you that shortly. Now to the camera, a few data about it. It comes with its sinus sensor with 1.3 megapixel, record maximum 1280 times 1024 pictures. And these pictures, the resolution you can naturally reduce. It goes down to 256 to 256 pictures. It plays a big role because the more pictures I make and the more large they are, so much data I much transfer. And thus, so much memory I need. And that means so slower I can record the pictures. With the ra larger resolution of 1280 to 1024, I can only, so to say, record 210 pictures per second. 
when I go down to 256 to 256 points, then I can record 2420 pitches per second. That is incredible. So now we want to have a look at what this camera has seen. I don't want to show you anything live because we need much more light in here. If you want to see extreme big and extreme short, why? Well, let's have a look first. So now I go out of my mode here, into a different mode, where I can see what I recorded before, or these recordings now. And I can see them as single pictures. I can also go through these single pictures. There are a lot of them. As you can see, they change all the time. And when I choose one of these single pictures, I can look at them in a preview. I also have the possibility to enlarge these pictures, and then I have the possibility to show these pictures subsequently to see as a film. That you can see the quality of the pictures and the beauty of the pictures. I have already played these pictures in a file, a MP4. You can use different formats. You can also save them as single pictures in BMP format to work on them. But I think we will look at the pictures which I recorded earlier. As you can see at the bottom of the metal shavings, how the heap gets bigger. You can also see how the shavings fall down like fluids. Although fluids would have a greater surface tension. And these here are very loose. You can see single particles that fall next to the stream and the structure, how it builds up, look very good as well. So that what we see now, you cannot do with a normal camera. Let's get back to the lighting. The lighting when you have a very old click-clack camera, as you know at the front there is a shutter, it opens and light comes in, exposes the film and then closes again. And you can also think when it opens very quickly, only a little light comes in. And when it opens very extremely, nearly no light comes in. And that is the problem, what we have by such recordings. We need lots and lots of light. And with normal cameras we cannot show this. I'll show you the setting possibilities, what this camera has. When we look at the screen and look at the right hand side, there we have the sensor type that is automatically recognized. If I set the resolution like I said before, here is 1280 times 1024 down to 256 to 256. Then we have, oh we have to shut it first. The gain which I can set in 8 steps. And then I have here how many frames I want to maximal record. Depending on how much memory I have reserved for this software, then I can record many pictures in high velocity which come into it. We also have another story. The possibilities of this camera, it can also look into the past. You know that doesn't work, but the effect is so. I can let the camera run and then set it off using a so-called trigger. With this, which I can attach to the camera rear, or naturally direct from my computer. And then I can say in the software, when the trigger button is initiated, then release a thousand pictures beforehand. That only works because the camera also always records and always saves, and when I push the button it says OK. That is not the first picture record, but the thousand pictures beforehand, or hundred, or fifty, or how you want it. The advantage with this is when you do it manually, and you see something, and we humans haven't got the reaction, and it is too late. And that's why with this camera using the software, you look into the past. Exactly as after the happening, I want so many pictures after the happening, and so forth, or run through till the memory is full. So let's have a look at the next setting. Exposure time of the lens. As you can see it goes from 100 microseconds and ends down there at 100 milliseconds. I can also set it with my own value. That means that these maximum 2420 pictures 
or the minimum resolution what this camera does, I can set simply with a key click. Unfinished. Such a camera serves to improve our products and to understand them and also in a school area or university area, there where you want to look a little deeper into the things, then it is a very important tool. Important and fun. Well, it was a lot of fun for me. As you can see, I am still playing with it. I wish you all a sharp eye and look quickly and exact and will not take a high-speed camera. Like this one here, the HSC 1660 from PCE. It made a lot of fun for me. And bye.